Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. We are Millennial Mom. If you don't know who is who, I'm Millennial. This is Mom. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Mom or Kay from Millennial Mom. And tonight we're gonna talk about Love After Lockup, season four, episode four, where there's smoke. Now, before I begin, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like and leave your comments. And if you're interested, we have a membership and the information will be available in the description box below. So here we go. Let's just start off with, we'll pick Mark and Sensoray because they didn't really have too big of a scene um, this episode. Mark gets a call from Sensere. He's excited to hear from her, but the thing about their conversation, well, really his conversation with her, he's asking her all kinds of questions that like is really off the wall. And when he's asking the questions, and I'll get to them in a minute, I'm thinking, so you're a businessman. You said you make 600,000 a year. Um, either if you're not just a businessman, maybe you just ha you have your own business too. But the questions you're asking is like, huh? So do you do sales too? Because yeah, no, it didn't add up. He just breaks out into random conversation like, so I heard if there's any trans in your prison and if someone gets pregnant, would they be allowed to leave because they're pregnant? What kind of question is that? I mean, if that was really real, I mean, think about that. If that happened, then trans or not, if there's male security guards or corrections officers, whatever they're called, um, you would think that they would be talking them into doing whatever they can do to get pregnant, get released, and not serve out the rest of their sentence. Like, does that make sense? Does that sound like that's a businessman? Would you want to do business with Mark knowing he thinks like that? Then he goes on to say in a quick scene that, you know, he likes Sensei Ray, even though she has a lot of time left to go like 11 years is manageable, but you know, she's got a high testosterone and he's attracted to that and she's young, so that helps too. Another question when he says, so when I come visit you or if I come visit you, um, like if it's in person, can I pass you a vial? I'm like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. There's already recording and I'm sure it's telling you like, is from a prisoner, these calls are being recorded. So why would you say something like that? on a recorded line that could get her in trouble because if someone's actually listening, why would they allow you a visit, you know? So Sensor Ray is really put off by the things he's saying and honestly, I am too. Um, she, you could tell she's listening, but she's actually like kind of like talking to him like, why would I want to get pregnant here? You know, I want to have a family when I come out, you know, and do it the right way, things like that. And Mark is just, I don't know, just his whole body language is just off for me. And then we also learned too, that Mark said he was a sperm donor. So maybe that's why he asked the question, but again, it's really inappropriate. And since Ray, even though her time was ticking down, was ready to get off the phone anyways, and I don't blame her. So now let's move to Chelsea and Mikey. Chelsea is still at her friend's house. Uh, her friend, Beth, I believe her name is, is determined to get information on behalf of Chelsea, because see, Beth thinks that Mikey is a catfish. Like she doesn't believe anything that's being said in the email or text or whatever exchange that Chelsea's getting information on, whether it be from his, Mikey's sister or, or Mikey's friend. She's like, mm -mm, let's go ahead and call the prison. And I'm thinking, why would you call the prison? You just called last week or Chelsea or whoever called last week. And they said, listen, we've got a lot of calls about Mikey he's not in the hospital or whatever they said that pretty much they told them to stop calling here. We're getting too much people calling to find out what's going on and we can't release that information anyways. So the friend decides to call back the prison to see like, hey, maybe we say something different. They'll get a different answer. So when they call, the person that answered the phone, she's explaining that Chelsea, you know, has an impairment and that she's helped trying to help her. So the person that answered the phone is saying, well, um, He's, it's not saying he's in the hospital, but then again, he left. But if you need more information, the point of contact is his mother. So you need to get in contact with his mother to find out what's really going on. 
Chelsea's anxious. She doesn't understand why she's getting different information. And once again, I'm thinking, you don't understand. Well, one, they can't really tell you because it's against like a HIPAA violation, whether it be medical or whatever for the prison, I'm sure. And then like, what makes you think it's shysty from a sister? Like, what makes you think it's so different? Was it that text message you got or the email from his JPay, like they said, from someone else talking about Mikey? Or the hospital you called couldn't give any information. The friend says, well, go ahead and call the mom. And Chelsea was like, mm, I don't know. I never met his mom. But she ends up calling the mom anyways. And the mom is saying, like, she hasn't heard anything either. From what she knows, Mikey was in the hospital and things were going on, like, with his health. But no one has given her too much information. And the mother's, like, saying, like, well, I don't know why because, you know, if I'm his point in contact, I'm also a nurse. So if they tell me what's going on, I could probably figure out, you know, if he's really going through something or not. But the mom said that she's going to get with the lawyer and take it from there. And so um, Chelsea's friend is translating everything what the mom is saying. And then Chelsea is telling her friend to say to the mom, well, can I come too to talk to the lawyer? And then uh, Mikey's mom's like, sure, why not? So then when we see Chelsea again, She's at home and her dad comes over and Chelsea's dad is trying to talk to Chelsea because apparently Chelsea has been in some terrible relationships before and her dad just does not approve of anyone that she talks to because he says that hmm, you know how to pick them. So Chelsea is telling her dad that, yeah, you know, I talked to um, Mikey's mom. I'm going up to Kentucky to find out what's going on and the lawyer, just that whole conversation. And the dad's like, why? Like, why would you do that? Like, what, what's going on? Like, you don't even know them. So... The dad thinks that Chelsea is being misled, but he knows, like he said in previous episodes, that maybe Chelsea's being hard-headed and is not going to listen anyways. But Chelsea's going off. She's cussing her dad out and everything else, and she's like, you know what, pretty much, you can kiss my behind, you know? <laughs> so the dad don't care what Chelsea's saying. The dad says, well, Chelsea, you know he's been in prison like 10 years, and you see the teardrop on the side of his face, he said that teardrop is either for him being in jail for so long or he really has something to do with someone's demise. And Chelsea's like, I don't care. That's the man I love. And then Chelsea goes along to talk about her previous relationship, how it was abusive and her ex got away from the police. He broke out of his ankle bracelet and just doing all kind of things related to street pharmaceuticals and eventually lost his life. So she understands that her dad, you know, is trying to protect her. But Chelsea is in this for love and her man apparently needs her help. So moving on to Emily and Dory. Emily is on her way to meet Smoke. Now we were introduced to Smoke last episode. Smoke was Dari's bunkie or cellmate the time that they were in prison. So they bonded, had a friendship together. And apparently while they were in prison together, they talked about opening a business. And since Emily is Dowry's power of attorney and holds the money, everything like that, Dowry told Smoke, hey, go hit up Emily. She'll give you the cash to start up whatever we're going to do. And Emily's suspicious, but Emily's suspicious anyways, because just her whole dynamic of how she got with Dory or dowry and, and the things that's going on uh, doesn't necessarily seem to be on the up and up one because of what she said she's working on her master's for, which is in the criminal justice system. And to me, that kind of in a way defeats the purpose. But then again, I don't know. So as she's driving to meet Smoke, she's on the phone with her friend and her friend is saying, so be careful. Like, are you going to give him money? And, you know, is this your, are you sure this is what you want to do? And Emily says, yeah, I'll be all right. You know, I plan on, you know, give him a little bit, something like that. I think she didn't necessarily allude to what she was going to do, but she mentioned that she was going to meet him regardless of the fact. So now we see a quick scene before Emily gets to the place where they meet up and it's Smoke. Smoke tells us he spent 10 years in prison, um, but I'm thinking, wow, he has a young face. So I wonder when he went in, maybe he went in really young. And then he says that Emily and Dari's relationship is toxic. He was, you know, around Dari when he was talking to Emily on the phone and she seemed like he's always disrespecting him. And he's thinking like, um, if she's disrespecting you like that and treating you the way she does, and on top of that, has never come seen you, he's suspicious of Emily too. 
So when Emily gets to the meeting spot, they're already bumping heads in conversation. It's not even like, I mean, they do like a, hey, like, how are you kind of thing, but not really. Um, Emily wants to know what the problem is, or actually Smoke wants to know what her problem is. Like, what is the issue that she has with Dari? Like the things that he said in his quick scene. And Emily is saying, well, you know, I mean, you are supporting Dari when he's blatantly cheating on me because she reminds us that Dari has called before her phone thinking it was somebody else, but it was really her. And then he's in the background smoke talking about, oh, just hang up, hang up. So Emily thinks that smoke is disrespecting her by helping Dari do what he does. And then again, smoke think that Emily's disrespecting Dari, so it's a bunch of back and forth with the things they're talking about each other with and the things they heard or didn't hear or speculation. Emily handed, well, she tried to hand, she didn't really because Smoke dropped whatever cash she gave. And the thing about Emily is she walked away, but she walked away emotional. She was crying, like, you know, she can't believe this and just everything. And I wasn't expecting that type of emotion from, from Emily. Because Emily has this hard outer shell, you know, talk about, oh, like, you know, no one's going to mess with me and I'm going to scam whoever and this is what it is. And, you know, if I spend the money, I do. If I don't, I don't. So that shell came down for whatever reason. But now that I think about it, maybe smoke is a connection to dowry. So maybe she, I don't know. That's just my guess. So then later on, we see Emily meet up with her friends at a bar and apparently... The friends think that whatever Emily is doing, you know, they don't believe. They don't think that she's in a real relationship. Questioning Emily about like, you know, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Like, do you see, have a plan with him? And Emily's like, huh, I know where I'll be in five to 10 years. So if he makes it to my plan, then that's just what it is. You know, kind of like sarcastic, but not answering the question. And then her female friend was saying, at the end of the day, Emily is playing chess, not checkers. And she said, even Emily told us a time or two that, you know, she's scamming the scammer, but at the same time, they feel like Emily's just putting on a facade because she doesn't want to give away that she's really into Dari the way that she thinks she is. So let's move to Melissa and Louie. So Melissa's on her way to Mama Donna's house and Melissa has called Louie to say, hey, I'm going to meet your mom. I guess she was trying to get like encouragement for Louie you know, let her know it'll be okay. But Louie's saying, mm, are you ready? Because even I want to know, are you ready? Because the phone call with Mama Donna last week, ooh, Mama Donna asked her, like, you know, I don't play. So don't come over here with nothing else going on. So Melissa makes it to the house and Donna was cordial. She tells Melissa, oh, well, let me show you around the house. And they go to Louie's room and Mama Donna says, you know, I haven't changed a room in many years. And so Melissa says, oh, can I take a selfie? Can I lay on the bed and see what it would be like? And the mama's like, you know what? Uh-uh, you taking things too far. I have to agree. You just laying and plopping on the bed? Like, that's rude. Who does that in people's houses? Apparently, Melissa does. So now they're in the kitchen. They're talking. And Melissa's saying, oh, well, you know, I saw Louie today. And Mama Donna said, what? How'd you see Louie? She goes, oh, I went by his job. She said, no, you didn't. Like, you, I know you didn't do that because you just can't go by his job. That's an hour and away and you forgot where he's at. Like that's a no, no. And then Melissa was trying to, trying to say like, oh, well she couldn't help herself. Mama Donna said, look, Melissa, we're trying to get Louie home. And don't you dare think about taking away the nine years and however many months that he's been away because you wanted to see Louie. And you know what? I agree with that because in last week's episode, last week's review, I was like, why, why would you do that? Like why? He even told you like coming over here, I can get in trouble. But see, Melissa is so stuck in her fantasy land of trying to relive her high school moments from her 15 year old self that she never got with Louis that she's still in her mind about that I don't think she cared. And, and well, clearly she didn't care. But now that Mama Donna is telling her about like, why would you do that? And we're trying to get him home and we don't need you messing it up. Melissa's tone kind of changes just a little bit. And I think Melissa had a little bit of more reality dose hit with her. Mama Donna also dropped some gems like, you know, when he gets out, he's coming here for a minimum of two years. And also too, you know, he's telling me about him wanting to be a yoga instructor. And, you know, did he tell you that? 
Melissa's like, no, he didn't tell me that. Like, two years? Well, what about me? And Donna was like, uh, I don't know, but that's what we're going to do. That's what we talked about. And then as far as a yoga instructor, oh, yeah, he's talking to like a Ratui or, or Ruta or whatever the name is. He could become certified. And Melissa's just listening and like, no, he never told me about any of this. And you know what? I'm not surprised because if Louie did say that to her or didn't say it to her, Melissa only has a one track mind and she only has one thing and one goal. And that is to, again, relive any high school moment she didn't have with Louie for right now. And then Mama Donna also told her, listen, if you have a problem with Louie doing the yoga instructor thing, maybe you ought to talk to him about who he's talking to, who the instructor is, and uh, go from there. Just ask him about it. So Melissa, ask him about it because I want to know too. Last but not least is Justine and Michael. So apparently we didn't have to wait to find out if Justine and Michael got married because clearly they did in the prison today. And so Justine told us that Michael wore a burgundy jumpsuit. It was a 10 minute ceremony and she's happy, she's giddy. Uh, her and her family came back outside after the ceremony. She threw her bouquet and that was it, they went home. So by the time she made it home, Michael was able to do a video call. And that's where the family was there waiting to talk to him and wish them congratulations. So apparently it was a good day. So when the kids see Michael on the video call, uh, one, I think his son asked, so dad, when are you coming home? He said, oh, I'll be there in nine weeks. And so he said, oh, nine weeks is not that long. That was good. I'm glad that the kids got to see their dad on video call and you know in a way his video call forever the lot allotted 10 15 minutes or whatever it was was their celebration but okay that's the way they do it they did it so then um they do like little small ceremonies um they cut the well she cuts the cake you know while he's on the phone um they do a wedding dance while she's on the phone things like that and then Michael says, so I had Juju get you something. I'm not sure who Juju is, but he goes, it's outside. So the family walks outside and lo and behold, it's her wedding gift and it is a black SUV and she's surprised. And you know who was surprised more than Justine? Justine's mom. Cause in confessional, she said, uh-uh. She goes, listen, I don't know how he's getting this stuff, but if he's getting illegal, I'm gonna shut it down right now. And Justine gonna have to go. I really don't think Justine would go. Justine seemed like, again, she's living in her fairy tale land and this is the man of her dreams. Justine says this is a man that she's never had before, who someone who treats her right and she doesn't ask for anything and doesn't know where he gets things from. So, you know, if he does nice things for her, then that's just what it is. In the same breath, she says that Michael has also bought her like, nice clothes, shoes, jewelry, came home with nice steaks on the doorstep, you know, from like maybe a company or something. And, you know, she's, again, doesn't know how he's getting these things or what's going on, but, you know, she's here for it because she's never had that before. But after all that, they come back in the house and Justine goes to the room so her and Michael could have a conversation like one-on-one. -on -one. And they're talking a little, you know, intimate, a little sexy at first, talking about, oh, you know, I wish you were here and it's going to be lonely tonight and talking about, oh, you know, I have my stripper pole. And so, you know, just trying to say like, you know, they're going to miss each other for the first night. But I wonder, because some prisons have conjugal visits when you get married. So maybe his doesn't have that or it depends on where he's at. All right, everyone. So next week's episode looks like we'll get a little bit more drama coming or along the season. They showed the upcoming on the season clip. So we'll have to wait for that and um, go from there. All right, everyone. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and leave your comments down below. So again, until next week, live simply, be grateful.